Hello students. So the grand finale, right? The whole certification exam. Now, based upon all the previous courses we've released, I was thinking a lot about the certification exam. And rather than have a conventional, you know, three or six hour exam, I've decided to do the SLA certification criteria a bit differently. So what is it? Now, instead of the six hour, you know, perform or die kind of a show, I would rather have you slog through the whole course and try out different assignments of varying difficulty and submit them as your exam. Now, here is what I'd like to do. You would need to solve seven assignments of varying difficulty, which I'll come to in just a bit. The solutions to these assignments would need to be posted on your personal blog. Now, if you've never used a blog, no problem. You can sign up for free on wordpress.com, Blogger, or anywhere else, or even your own domain if you have one, or if you run an existing blog, you could pretty much use that. It's important that apart from the blog post explaining the assignment solutions, you create a GitHub account and store all the source code you've created for those assignments, which is your ASM files, any other helper files in languages like Python, etc., inside your GitHub account. Now, the code and everything you kind of put out should be, you know, a Creative Commons license so that everyone from the community can benefit, right? Open it up, make it open source. Uh, that's the best way to go about. Now let me come to the individual assignments. Assignment one. Now we've looked at creating uh, or actually more of analyzing a shell bind TCP using libmu. What I'd like you to do is create a shell bind TCP shell code which binds to a port and execs a shell on an incoming connection. Now the port number should be easily configurable in your shell code, which means you can either write a little wrapper script which spits out your shell code and that wrapper script takes in the port number or you know you mark the specific byte inside the shell code where you'd like us to replace with the port numbers. This is assignment one. Assignment two, a little bit more, which is shell reverse TCP, in which case you need to have both the IP and port number of the host to connect back to made configurable. Assignment three. Now there's one kind of shell code I've left out, which is egg hunter. Egg hunter is very interesting and is pretty much like the way you would visualize uh, a two stage payload. So egg hunter, the very first stage goes ahead and searches for a pattern which it can find in memory and that pattern signifies where the second stage lies which needs to be executed right so look it up look at uh, uh, how egg hunter shell code is created and create a working demo of an egg hunter and also make it configurable for different payloads which means the second stage once the pattern is found and you want to execute the second stage uh, the second state should be something which can be easily configured and different payloads can be used. Assignment four. Now I showed you how to probably think a bit creatively and create your own encoders, right? The insertion encode, which I showed you in one of the videos. Now be creative and think about your own custom encoding schema, right? Create a POC using the execv stack shell code which we talked about uh, to encode with this schema and then to execute assignment five take up at least three shell code samples created with msf payload for linux x86 and you could use gdb and disasm or libmo to dissect the functionality of the shell code and lay it out piece by piece just like the way we've discussed and you need to present a thorough analysis for each of them. Assignment six. So we talked about polymorphism and how you could create polymorphic versions of a shell code. Take up three shell codes from shellstorm.org and create polymorphic versions of them to beat pattern matching. Now ensure that the polymorphic version 
isn't larger than one and a half times or 150 percent of the existing shell code which is if the original shell code is 30 your polymorphic version should not be greater than 45. Of course if you manage to make the shell code polymorphic version smaller then you get bonus points for that. Assignment 7 I talked about a custom cryptor in the cryptors video I'd like you to make your own custom cryptor. Feel free to use any of the existing encryption schema out there or maybe even invent your own which might not be a great idea but you could. You're free to use any programming language you like to demo this, right? Now it is very important that every blog post for each of the seven assignments which I have mentioned must contain the following either at the top or bottom somewhere so we know that this blog post has been created specifically for the SLA. So you need to mention this exact uh, statement this blog post has been created for completing the requirements of the security tube Linux assembly expert certification the link and your student ID SLA whatever right you would receive the student ID in the course material email uh, from our staff and that's what you need to use and this ensures that you know you can't just point us to random blog posts uh, this has to be very specific for SLAE and this needs to be mentioned in every blog post to be uh, make it acceptable for evaluation so what is the evaluation criteria a originality of shell code right how much out of the box can you think B the quality of explanation I mean I would love to see multiple screenshots very detailed insightful and comprehensive analysis of what you did and how you did in each of the blog posts now each of these assignment carries 10 marks and the certificate awarding criteria is you need to at least get 50 out of 70 marks doesn't end here there are bonus extra points now apart from these seven blog posts if you manage to create more shell codes while you're learning uh, then those would be extra points as well at most 10 points will be awarded and there's no better way to celebrate a new shell code but to submit it to sites like shellstorm and exploit db and if your shell codes do get accepted even one of them for that matter then you are awarded 10 additional points right remember when you submit ensure you write at least somewhere in the comments that this is for slae so that we know that uh, this is your shell code submitted to exploit db finally we'd like you to share your new shell code with everybody so go ahead you know uh, share it with the community over twitter facebook i would really say engage with people answer their questions if they have questions about what you did and how you did because this would improve your own understanding. So community interaction is an additional five points. So finally, the submission format for the exam. Now you would need to work by yourself in solving the seven assignments and creating the seven blog posts, right? Uh, and this is really the exam, so we may not help you anywhere in between with any hints or anything like that. Once you're ready and done, Go ahead, send a mail to feedback at binarysecuritysolutions.com. The subject of the email should be SLE exam blog posts and the email should contain links to all the seven posts, link to your GitHub account where we can find the code for the seven assignments, link to Shellstorm exploit DB if you've submitted and it got accepted. And finally, links to tweets or Facebook posts in case you shared it and you have something interesting to show us. Of course, also mention your SLE student ID uh, so that we know that uh, the specific student name we are dealing with. After submission, we typically take around five working days to get back with the result, right? Fantastic. So that's it guys. I hope you've enjoyed the whole course and I hope you're going to enjoy writing the exam even more because I am really excited and waiting to see how each of you solve these seven assignments or how you create more new exciting little shell code.
right? So all the best and hopefully uh, you will get certified real soon. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.